something was going to happen during our visit to Jerusalem, but not this, not. Jesus had been saying lots of things about how he must suffer and how the Son of Man must be lifted up, but none of us really knew what he was really talking about. I didn't imagine for a second that he meant that kind of suffering. When he talked about being lifted up, I remembered that time on the mountain with Moses and Elijah, lifted up in glory to God in heaven, not lifted high up on a wooden cross. It all started Thursday night. Jesus told us to prepare a place for us to celebrate the Passover together. He was very specific about where it should be and that only the 12 of us were to join him. We prepared the place and the meal as he had asked us to. Judas was mysteriously missing during the day though, and he was late for supper. During the meal, Jesus started saying that he was to be handed over, that his time was coming. The mood was sombre to say the least. No singing and rejoicing as there normally would be for the celebration of Passover. I was sat next to him during the meal, Peter was the other side. I could sense that there was a great sadness in Jesus, but I didn't really know why. He gathered us together, made sure we were all listening. He took some bread in his hand, raised it high towards heaven, and gave thanks to God. He then took it, broke it, and handed it to each of us, saying, This is my body, which will be given up for you. There were many confused faces around the table. Then Jesus took a cup of wine, and doing the same, raising it high above his head, he thanked God and then passed it round to each of us, saying, This is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. He told us to do this in memory of me. He then spoke words that chilled me to the bone. He told us very solemnly that one of us was going to betray him that night. Not I, Lord, surely, we all responded. But Jesus said no more. He just quietly left the table and signalled us to follow him. We made our way to the Garden of Gethsemane, a familiar place we've been many times. Jesus asked me, my brother James and Peter to go with him and he told us to stay awake, to keep watch and pray. He went on our own to a quiet place to pray. We tried so hard to stay awake but our eyes were so heavy and we fell asleep. Jesus returned and woke us and as he did, the mob arrived, led by Judas. They came with clubs and swords, violently shouting and jeering. They roughly grabbed Jesus, arrested him and bound him with rope, dragging him away. He said nothing, quietly accepting his fate. I was paralysed with fear. I could not say anything. I didn't even try to defend him. What kind of friend am I? I followed closely behind to see where they took him. Peter was with me and we followed them right into the praetorium. Peter fell behind, but I was able to hear the questions they put to Jesus. Annas, the high priest, was interrogating Jesus, and then they sent him to Caiaphas. I left at this point. I had to tell Mary, Jesus' mother, so I went to find her. I returned to the praetorium at the crack of dawn. Jesus had clearly been badly beaten. His face was swollen and his eyes heavy with tiredness. Pilate came out to question him. That's when the shouting and the yelling started. Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate clearly wanted to let Jesus go, especially when Jesus told him that he was a king. But Pilate was a coward and was too afraid of the angry mob shouting for Jesus' death. I couldn't believe what was happening. I'd followed Jesus for three years. He was my best friend. And there he was, beaten, dejected, alone, and yet quiet, full of patience and understanding, full of love, just as he always was. He stood in front of Pilate like an innocent lamb. As Jesus was sentenced and sent away to be crucified, I found Mary, Jesus' mother. She clearly not slept and looked so pale and frightened. I took her by the hand and we made our way quietly through the crowd, wanting to follow Jesus as closely as we could. The streets of Jerusalem were lined with people, all there to jeer and mock Jesus. They spat on him, laughed when he fell, and hurled all sorts of insults at him. 
So many of these angry people were the ones who had welcomed him so triumphantly and joyfully into Jerusalem just days before. The sun was already high and the day just got hotter and hotter. By the time we reached the place called the Skull, it was the heat of the day and there was no shade or protection from the sun. Mary was so strong and steadfast, refusing to leave her son. Jesus had already lost so much blood, it's a wonder that he didn't die on the way, under the weight of the cross. I couldn't watch as they drove rough nails into his hands and feet. The cross was raised, and we stood as close as the Romans would let us. Jesus knew we were there. I hoped that was some consolation to him. I felt so hopeless, I could let him down. Why didn't I say something? Why didn't I try to defend him? Tears rolled down my cheeks as I watched my Lord suffer. He turned to me and Mary and said, Woman, this is your son. And to me, he said, This is your mother. I held Mary close, reassuring her that she would always have a home. She wept silent tears, never taking her eyes off of Jesus. Suddenly, in a loud voice, Jesus exclaimed, It is fulfilled! And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. They took Jesus down from the cross and laid him in the arms of his mother, who wept and held him close. They then took his body away to be buried. I brought Mary back to his house. The other disciples are here as well. We are afraid of what will happen next. So many of the Jews were so angry. Peter is keen to return to Galilee, but I have told him we have to wait. This can't be the end. It just can't. I didn't follow Jesus for three years for it to end like this. We have to wait. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, our Saviour and Redeemer, as we reflect on your great sacrifice, walk with us on our journey through Lent. We give thanks for the cross and your gift of love and forgiveness. As we reflect on the events of Good Friday, May we place ourselves at the foot of the cross with your disciples, drawing close to you and your mercy. Help us to know your love for us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord and Saviour. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>